All right, so do you know why there is a problem with this expression right here? And what we have is the square root of 3 over 10. So a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, I don't see a problem. We're simply taking the square root of a fraction. And indeed we are, but there is an issue with this expression the way it is written. So let's see if you know what the problem is here and more importantly, how to fix it. But uh, we have a multiple choice question. So the square root of 3 over 10 is equal to one of these over here. So the answer to this expression when it's written correctly is one of these. So let's go ahead and take a look at these choices. So A is 3 over 10, B is 10 over the square root of 3, C is the square root of 30, and D is the square root of 30 over 10. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to tell you what the problem is with this expression and how to fix it. This is very, very important, especially for those of you that are studying algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take another look at this problem. So uh, a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't really see an issue here. Uh, I mean, it looks okay to me. We're simply taking the square root of a fraction. Well, there is a big problem with the way this is written right now. But uh, let's see if you got the right answer. And the correct answer here is D, the square root of 30 over 10. So in other words, this expression right here, the square root of 3 over 10, is equal to the square root of 30 over 10. This is not uh, good in terms of how it's written from a mathematical standpoint. So we can change this into this, and this expression, the square root of 30 over 10, is much better. All right, now, of course, if you got this right, uh, you know that is outstanding, and you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of rationalizing the denominator. All right, so you might be saying, all right, I'm totally lost, Mr. YouTube Math Man. What are you talking about? Well, let's go ahead and get into it right now. All right, so here is our problem. So we have the square root of 3 over 10. What is this equal to? Well, if you did have a calculator, one might say, well, I'm going to take 3 and divide it by 10, and then I'll just take the square root of that. And then, you know, you'll just kind of check each one of these and see which one is the equivalent answer. I guess that could work, and uh, you'll see that uh, the square root of 30 over 10, you'll get uh, basically the same value. But that's not what we're talking about here, okay? But uh, it's important to recognize that we have a multiple choice math question. And if some of you are like, well, if I came across this problem on a test, I know what I'm going to do. I'm simply going to guess, and uh, that's exactly what you should do. Okay, never ever leave a multiple choice question blank unless you're going to get penalized for the wrong answer. And that can be the case on some tests like the SAT or the ACT. But nothing drives a math teacher uh, more uh, kind of crazy <laughs> is when they see a test, especially a multiple choice uh, test, uh, with blank uh, questions, right? Just go ahead and give it, uh, you know, just, you know, for those of you that are still math students, never, ever leave a question blank. So just guess, right? So here you might be saying, well, 3 over 10, maybe we just drop the square root. Maybe it's uh, 3 over 10. Well, that is a fantastic guess. Unfortunately, it is wrong. And uh, so here's the thing. When you have a multiple choice question, again, at least guess. But if we didn't have a multiple choice question at all, well, we're simply going to have to know the math. And that's what we're going to get uh, go ahead and get into right now. All right, so as I indicated, this is critical, especially for those of you that uh, are um, algebra students, because working with square roots is much more than saying, all right, the square root of 9 is 3. There's a lot of different properties that you need to understand about uh, square roots, and we're going to go ahead and talk about a very important one right now. All right, so the first thing that we need to recognize is that when we have the square root of a fraction, like the square root of 3 over 10, 
we have a property of square roots and radicals because this little thing in math is also known as a radical. So if you want to look in your uh, textbook, for those of you that are taking maybe a math course, and like, hey, where do they teach this? You know, in the math book, well, look for a chapter or a unit called like radical expression, uh, radical expressions, radical um, equations, things like that. That's typically where you learn about square roots because uh, what we're talking about here also applies to things like the cube root of a number or the fifth root of a number. So it's not only not just only the square roots. All right, so we have a property, which is effectively a law, uh, basically allows us to do the following. So we have the square root of a fraction. Here we have a numerator and a denominator. So we have one big square root over this fraction. Well, we have this particular property that says, hey, you can break up this fraction into two individual square roots. And this is really powerful. So the square root of 3 over 10 is equal to the square root of 3 over the square root of 10. So we just put a separate square root over the numerator and the square, uh, separate square root over the denominator. Now, this is important as well because if you come across, come across a problem like this, you can also write it this way. Okay, So you're going to basically use this property in both directions. In other words, when you have the square root of a fraction written this way, you could break it up into its separate parts. Or if you see a problem like this, sometimes it's helpful to put it back in this form. All right, so this is the first thing that we need to understand is that we can break up this fraction uh, in terms of the square root of the entire fraction as the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. All right, so now that we understand that, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the problem here. Okay, so you might be saying, well, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what is the big deal? Okay, still don't see a problem. Well, this is the problem right here. So what we have is a division problem we're taking the square root of 3, effectively, square root of 3, and this fraction bar, remember, is the division operator. So we're taking the square root of 3 and we're dividing it by the square root of 10. What we're doing is dividing by an irrational number, and that is a big no-no in mathematics. So we cannot divide by a square or a, uh, an irrational number. Now, you might be saying, all right, uh, fine, Mr. YouTube Math Man, why not? And what is an irrational number? So let's talk about that right now. Okay, so a, uh, an irrational number, if you look here, it's irrational. So let's just talk about what a rational number is. So a rational number, okay, matter of fact, we have to do a quick review on basic numbers. So here's zero, and then we have one, two, et cetera. So we have all these numbers on the real number line. Okay, so we have natural numbers, counting numbers, whole numbers, uh, integers, et cetera. Now, a rational number is any number that we can express as a fraction of two integers. So these are the integers right here. So a number like two-thirds is a rational number. A number like five is a rational number because you can express five as a fraction of integers five over one. Now, 0.25 is actually a rational number as well because 0.25 you can express as the fraction one-fourth. So again, a rational number is a number that you can express as a fraction made up of integers. Okay, so this is a really important concept. But here, the square root of 10 is what we call an irrational number. That means that this number cannot be expressed as a fraction of, uh, made up of integers. In other words, if you go into your calculator and you take the square root of 10, you're going to get a very long decimal, and it's going to go on and on and on. Matter of fact, it's going to go to infinity. The digits of this answer go all the way out to infinity because uh, the square root of 10, or an irrational number, is what we call a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. So it goes on and on and on and on and on. We uh, literally will have to go out to infinity to get the entire answer, and both you and I don't have that kind of time. So it doesn't really make sense that we're going to divide something by a number that never really stops. Okay, it's like having a pizza. If we want to take that pizza, we want to divide it in four ways. Well, we can divide this pizza by four, and we understand the answers. There's one, two, three, four pieces. No big deal. But if we divide this pizza by a number that never really stops, it goes on and on and on. Well, we really cannot uh, figure out, you know, the actual uh, amounts for these particular slices. So I kind of like to use that example. Hopefully that kind of makes sense to you, but what you really need to know is that when you have an irrational number, 
in the denominator. You cannot leave uh, it um, as such in mathematics, all right? So if you gave this um, problem right here to your teacher, um, either this or this, they're going to be very upset and they'll be like, hey, didn't you watch that guy on YouTube? Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure he explained it pretty well. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about how we can fix this. So what we can do is take the square root of 3 over 10 or the square root of 3 over the square root of 10, and we can simply fix the situation where we do not have an irrational number in the denominator. All right, so let's talk about that right now. So here is, again, the problem. We have the square root of 3 over 10. Uh, so 3 over 10, that's our fraction. The square root of 3 over 10, we can write it this way the square root of 3 over 10. So we're going to use a uh, lovely little trick here. Okay, what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do is multiply our fraction, the square root of 3 over the square root of 10 by one. All right, so what happens when you multiply any number by one? Well, if you take five and you multiply by one, you simply get back to five. If you take a and multiply by one, you get back to a. This is something called the multiplicative identity. That's just the kind of fancy uh, property that says, hey, if you have something and you multiply by one, you get back to what you multiplied by, right? So that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is multiply the square root of three over the square root of 10 by one. But the one that we're going to use is a very fancy one. So now I got you interested. You're like, all right, Mr. T.J. Math Man, show me this one that you're talking about that's going to fix our problem. All right, so let me go ahead and show you this one right now. And the one that I'm talking about is this right here. All right, so we have the square root of three over the square root of 10, and we're gonna multiply by one, which is this one. Now, you might be saying, well, that doesn't look like one uh, to me. Well, it is, right? Because anything divided by itself is one. So if I take the square root of 10 and I divide it by the square root of 10, that's one. If I take seven and I divide it by seven, that's one. If I take A and I divide it by A, that's one. So anything you divide by itself is one. So we're taking this and we're multiplying it by a fancy one, which is the square root of 10 over the square root of 10. So I'm kind of uh, explaining to you in this way because a lot of you probably were taught this. We're like, okay, whatever this is, uh, multiply it, um, uh, whatever's in, in the denominator, and this is correct, by the way, the square root of 10, multiply the denominator and the uh, numerator by the square root of 10. Well, I kind of like to explain it as, hey, we're just going to multiply by one. In other words, we're going to make this look differently, but we're not changing the value, right? So I want you to understand the big picture mathematics here. So let's go ahead and do this. We got the square root of uh, three over the square root of 10, and we're gonna multiply by square root of 10 over the square root of 10, which of course is one. And now we need to understand another property of square roots, and, and that is how to multiply square roots. Okay, so when we have one square root and we mul want to multiply by another square root, so here we have two fractions, right? So what we need to do is, again, when we have another uh, one square root or we're, we're multiplying by another square root, so here we're going to multiply the numerators, right? The square root of 3 times the square root of 10. You can write this as one big square root 3 over 10. So in other words, what's inside or what's under these square roots, you can write under one big square root. So the factors of three and 10, you could break up as a square root of three times the square root of 10. So this is another property of square roots that you need to understand to do this problem. All right, so we've already couple, covered a couple of properties um, about uh, this property here, when we could take a fraction and break it up into its individual uh, square roots. And the same thing here, you could take a product and break up that product into its individual factors. In other words, you could put a, a square root over each factor, or you can do it this way, okay? So when you're multiplying two square roots, uh, it's gonna be the square root of three times 10. All right, so we do have a fraction here. So this fraction being multiplied by this fraction. So uh, we're going to multiply the numerators and the denominators. So the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is what? What's gonna be the square root of 10 times 10? So now let's go ahead and take the next step and clean this work up and uh, see our final answer. But before we do that, let's go ahead and have you do this, and that is to su uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, why would you want to do such thing? You might be saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, go ahead and tell me. Well, I'm just gonna basically say this. I'm on a mission, and I've been on, uh, been on YouTube for well over 10 plus years. I've posted well over 3,000 videos, and I have no intention to stopping because I love teaching mathematics, but 
really why I love teaching math is I love helping people really be successful in math. Okay, when you've taught as long as I have, there's so many people that really get down on themselves. They're like, well, I don't get it. I'm totally lost. I'm not that smart. Well, listen, you are smart, okay, and you're capable of being successful in mathematics, but it's going to take work, okay? So if you're not willing to work, well, you're going to have a tough time, and it's going to take time, okay? So you have to study the stuff. You have to be immersed in it, but most importantly, you know, if you're willing to do the work and put in the time, you need great, clear, comprehensive math instruction, and I use that word comprehensive because comprehensive means someone a fully explains the concepts and properties so you can truly understand you know what's going on and that's what I like to do I like to take one problem and go super slow so I cover a lot of material on my YouTube channel but uh, if you're interested in really learning from me check out my full main math courses you'll find links to those in the description of this video but in the meantime I definitely can use your support to grow my channel to help as many people as I possibly can and if you're going to subscribe uh, make sure to hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. So we have the square root of 3 times 10 over the square root of 10 times 10. So just to kind of pick up things uh, again, what we're doing is we're multiplying the square root of 3 over the square root of 10 by 1. Okay, so that's the square root of 10 over the square root of 10. This is equal to 1. Now we're doing... Uh, this multiplication, right? So the square root of 3 times the square root of 10 is equal to this, and the square root of 10 uh, times the square root of 10 is equal to the square root of 10 over 10. All right, so we're going to pick it up right here, and uh, now uh, the square root of 3 times 10 is the square root of 30, and the square root of 10 times 10 is what? Well, that's the square root of 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. So the whole reason why we did this little trick here is to get rid of the irrational number in the denominator, okay? We don't really care if we have an irrational number in the numerator. The key is to get rid of it in the denominator. So when we multiplied this thing by itself, the square root of 10 times the square root of 10, what we did is we created a perfect square, and perfect squares are numbers like 9, 25, 16, where we take uh, the square root of these numbers, we get lovely little you know, nice whole number of values, like the square root of 16 is 4, square root of uh, 25 is 5, square root of 9 is 3, so the square root of 100 is 10, and there you go. So now we have an equivalent fraction, the square root of 30 over, the, uh, over 10, okay? So now we have a rational number in the denominator, and this is the way you need to leave your answers uh, when you're faced with a square root situation, right? So you never, ever leave an irrational number in the denominator. Very important skill, and this skill, again, is called rationalizing the denominator. And there's another kind of aspect to this in more uh, complicated math problems, and a little bit more complicated. Let me show you an example. If you had like 7 over the square root of 2 plus 1, well, this is a problem because the square root of 2 is an irrational number, and to fix this, you need to understand something called the conjugate. And uh, it's basically the same concept here. Uh, what we're going to do is multiply this by the square root of 2 minus 1, both the numerator and denominator. But uh, anyways, I'm not going to get into this uh, aspect. This is kind of next level of fixing irrational numbers in the denominator. But uh, if you need help with any of this stuff, I have a ton of additional YouTube videos on uh, ir irrational numbers, excuse me, and fractions and square roots and whatnot. But really, you probably want to check out like my full main Algebra 1 uh, course. You can find a link to it in the description below. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.